It is a rainy Thanksgiving day. And since I can't be outside working in the garden, thought I would make some jerky. Hey everybody. So today I'm gonna be making some jerky. Um, and it's not beef jerky. This is elk backstrap jerky. This particular recipe, this balsamic mustard, I made last week. Um, and I over dehydrated it. It was just a little too crunchy, um, but the flavor was fantastic. So I wanna try it again. I'm new at this dehydrating thing. Um, this is my very first dehydrator. Got it for my birthday a couple weeks ago from my mom. Thanks mom. And so I've been dehydrating all the things, like all the things, because it's fun. Elk, jerky, balsamic, mustard. Very few ingredients, very simple. The taste, it, it's like a flavor bomb. It's wonderful. Um, so let me show you um, the recipe and the, uh, the ingredients. Okay, so the recipe actually came with the dehydrator. Uh, it's a Kasori stainless steel food dehydrator. It's very pretty, I'll show you that in a minute. And this is the recipe, the balsamic mustard beef jerky. And it's very simple, very simple. Two pounds of beef eye round is what it calls for, but we have this beautiful elk backstrap lovely, lovely piece of meat right there. Um, a cup of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of olive oil, tablespoon Dijon mustard, two garlic cloves crushed, and a teaspoon of salt. That is it, people. No soy sauce, no Worcestershire, none of that, and it tastes so good. So let's get started. First thing, it says to cut the meat across the grain into five millimeter thick slices. I think five millimeters is, is like a quarter of an inch because that's what we're gonna do. Let me do a little trimming here. So it's important when you make jerky not to have any fat, um, as little fat as possible on your meat. You want a very lean piece of meat, which this elk is almost as lean as you get. Um, but that fat um, doesn't quite dehydrate like the other meat does and it can go rancid and that's not, not good or make you sick. All this sinewy stuff is fat necessarily, but uh, I'm sure it won't taste as good. And as you can see, there's not a lot of fat marbling in this meat at all. So cut into it here. And I do not have sharp knives. I'm just going to tell you right now, my knives are so old. I got this knife at a Pampered Chef party like 15 years ago. <laughs> I've never sharpened it. But so here we go. And I think that's the thickness I need. I think that's what we're gonna go with. Like I said, this will be the second time in my life I'm making this. It's a beautiful, beautiful burgundy color. So this is elk. This meat is a little easier to slice thin if it's just a little bit frozen, like not a solid block, but just to stiffen it up a bit. This is completely thawed. And so it's a little floppy once you get towards the end here. So this last couple of pieces might be a little awkward. See, that's too thick, but just shave it. I don't want it to be too thin. This is gonna be ugly, folks. I'm not a chef. So that's gonna be a really thin piece, but this one's good. Okay. So, let's put that aside for a minute and start mixing our other ingredients. All right, so first we need a cup of balsamic vinegar. Check this out. There we go. That's it. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Mm 
one tablespoon Dijon mustard, two garlic cloves crushed, crushed garlic, last one teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to whisk, blend everything together evenly. All right. So let's get our meat. Now you can do this um, in Ziploc bags. Um, if I were making uh, different kinds like I did last time, um, last time I made jerky, I made three different um, flavors. So I put them in Ziploc bags so I could write on the bag what it was, you know, what each one was. But for this one, um, I'm just gonna save the plastic and use this stainless steel mixing bowl. I'll just leave it in the bowl to marinate overnight um, or at least six hours. It doesn't have to be overnight. It's early in the morning here. Um, so I will leave this in the fridge for about six hours. Um, it is Thanksgiving, so we do have um, a dinner to go to. So when we get back this evening, I'll probably take this out um, and we will get it into the dehydrator. There it is. It's going in the fridge. Hey everybody. Okay, Thanksgiving dinner's over. Get on the stretcher pan. This is ready. This has been marinating since about 9.30 this morning. It's now eight o'clock at night, so it's good. Good and marinated. And um, you can see that it has soaked in all of that goodness. Yeah, and because this is a little drippy, let me wash my hands. So because this is a little drippy, I'm gonna be using parchment paper. The dehydrators, um, the trays come with these plastic things um, that you can put um, smaller things on that you don't want um, to fall through like if you have small things that you don't want them to fall through these holes this will stop them from falling through but because this is a really really drippy i'm going to use parchment paper because it's still going to drip everywhere with this so and this parchment paper is way bigger than the tray so i'm gonna have to cut it to size so let me do that real quick work. Oh, jerky. So these are going to shrink. I could put them fairly close together and they should be fine. These are going to be so tangy. I mean, if you like tangy stuff, if you like um, salt and vinegar potato chips or like fried pickles, if you're that person, this is your jerky. Okay, so I had three pieces left in the bowl on a new piece of parchment here, um, and there's some room left on this parchment. So I have this that I've been marinating today also. So after I filmed earlier this morning, um, I had some roast. I think it's a rump roast? Anyway, I had some roast that I had bought specifically to make jerky. Um, and I was drinking red wine. Don't judge me drinking red wine at 9 30 just a little bit anyway i was like i think red wine would make a great jerky like marinade so i kind of made this up it is red wine it is dark uh brown sugar um garlic salt onion powder soy sauce and a fresh jalapeno from my garden so this has been marinating the same amount of time. There's a lot of it in here too. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish out this parchment with this, just so I can taste it, see how it is. Tomorrow, um, or whenever this is done, 
tomorrow, um, I will put the rest of this batch in here, uh, in the dehydrator. So, long story. I know. I know. I know. What? Let's put it in the dehydrator. Okay. So this is the, um, well, it's the coffee bar microwave bread toast laundry dehydrator room, which everyone I'm sure has one. So, uh, come closer. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. This is the uh, Kasori stainless steel dehydrator that I got for my birthday. It is um, beautiful. Very lovely. Um, let's see here. That. This will not be a dehydrator review because I've never had one before. So for me, this one works great. Um, trays. Um, nice trick down at the bottom. These fruit roll-up trays. If you just leave one in the... Hi. Um, if you just leave one in the bottom, it captures anything that falls and um, you don't have to like have a mess in the bottom of your... Anyway, cool trick. Okay, so let me go get my uh, meat trays and we'll get this loaded. Alright, there's all three trays. There's a fan in there and it just blows, just blows hot air all around. So, because I overcooked it last time and made it too crispy, because I did 165 degrees for 10 hours, whatever, um, not recommended. I'm gonna start at 165, because that's the highest it'll go. This thing only goes to 165. I'm gonna do it 165 for four hours, and then we'll come check it, eight, nine, 10, 11, if I'm awake. If not, it'll automatically shut off at four hours. So it won't over, it won't keep going. So, okay. So time temp, 165, it's already set. Time temp again, and that's where I set my hours. Oh, went too far. Four hours, start. You hear it? And that's all you do. Um, and this is not touching anything, like nothing is touching it. It's not gonna get that hot, but it will get pretty warm. Um, and there is a hole, see there? It's not like completely sealed, so air is like getting out and going around and anyway. Okay, so um, as soon as this is done, we will taste test. It's the next morning, obviously. All right, this jerky cooked for four hours while we slept. Um, in the middle of the night, I tasted the wine. I went with the red wine and it was good. Here's the, so this is like the roast beef one. This is the beef. It's good, it's good. It's a little rubbery, but it's not crunchy and dry. So, the taste was good. But hold on, I want to get to the mustard. Which one, which one? Let's do this one. So, this is the mustard and vinegar. I have not tasted it yet. It is still pliable. It is not crunchy. It's not a chip. Okay. Texture's good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Balsamic vinegar and mustard. That's nice. That's nice. That's what everything looks like. They shrink a little bit. Texture is good. The um, red wine ones. I like very much. I would have put either more jalapeno or I would have put some uh, habanero in there. I'm talking with my mouth full, apologize, but this is really good. 
So I hope you try this and I hope you enjoy it. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.